the key for us is to identify those areas of manufacturing where we can actually compete at an international level. I don't think anyone suggests that going back to the 1980s or pre-1980s era of you know, economic protectionism is going to do any, any benefit favours for anyone uh, in South Australia. Um, and you've got to remember that South Australia's manufacturing base developed in the post-war period behind a big big tariff hall and those days are over. The economic reforms of the Hawke and Keating governments of the 1980s put an end to that and then the uh, rise of manufacturing of the sort of white goods in, um, in Asia has also put an end to that. I mean, that's not the future for South Australia. Um, the future for South Australia has to be in the high-end high manufacturing, those sort of niche areas, and that's why the government's been keen to develop the uh, defence sector with um, Defence SA and the good work that Andrew Fletcher's doing um, and the work that we've done in attracting the frigate uh, contract to, um, uh, to South Australia and getting all the spin-offs um, from that. But I think the key area for us must be to develop a, a high-skilled workforce. Um, we need to make sure that uh, our workforce have the skills which industry demands and increasingly uh, that's uh, at the higher end of the skill levels. That's people with trade qualifications, uh, it's people with high levels of literacy and numeracy and that's why we've rolled out our Skills for All reforms, completely turning vocational education uh, on its head. Uh, the, the strategies that you're talking about are, are long term. How do you deal with some of the short term pain that the economy is feeling from the uncontrollables, the high dollar, the global turmoil, etc. Well, the first thing we don't do is pretend that the government can sort of major wave a wand and, and fix everything. Our economy, our state economy, is going through a very difficult period of adjustment, and probably a more difficult period of, period of adjustment, adjustment than any, almost any other state. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, there's any quick fixes, and I don't think sort of throwing money at the problem by the state government is going to going to do anyone any favours. Uh, either. Uh, I should point out, we still have very low levels, historically low levels of unemployment. Um, I don't doubt that time, there's no doubting that times are tough, um, but our employment is holding up uh, reasonably well, I think, uh, given the sort of challenges that we face. Access Economics identified that, I think. They said that, uh, that OK, at the moment, the unemployment levels uh, are holding but as the federal government stimulus funding uh, starts to fade, mm. they can see that getting worse in the construction sector in particular, and the housing slump, of course, is added uh, to that. Uh, is that a concern for you? Is that a, is that a watching brief that you've got, uh, or are you confident that we'll ride out that? Story? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a concern, and Access Economics have rightly identified the uh, effect of the winding down of the federal government stimulus money. Uh, and the effect that that's happening uh, on our state economy. And there's no doubt as I go around and speak to local businesses, that's one thing that they're really finding is that uh, 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 um, investment or um, uh, you know, purchase of new housing, new construction uh, in the commercial and, and, and domestic markets is completely, you know, is drying up. Um, one of the things that we're doing to sort of mitigate that is the government's using this as an opportunity to roll out our own capital expenditure program. So in this year's budget there's $9.1 billion over the forward estimates of projects such as the um, South Road Superway, the duplication of the Southern Expressway, the electrification of the Metropolitan Rail Network and of course the new Royal Adelaide Hospital which will start... They're, they're, they're all major projects mm. uh, and, and they will have a, an impact, there's no doubt about that, but do they pick up the slack from the people that uh, that got work from, say, the education uh, school halls projects? In other words, well, are those projects a little bit too big for, say, the uh, domestic construction sector? Yeah, look, I, I acknowledge your point. I think they certainly will help um, because such is the size of the projects, and these are multi-billion dollar projects, that money will filter through the economy and will help take up some of the slack. Um, but there's no doubt there's probably a role there for government to also look at whether there's, there's an opportunity there uh, at, the, at the, sort of the smaller end, the lower end, um, to, see with, to see whether we can use this as an opportunity to do some of those smaller projects. But at the same time, I need to make sure that we've got a sustainable budget, um, that we're not entering into, uh, we don't uh, take on uh, uh, levels of debt that we can't sustain. Mm. You were quite specific uh, in your budget about uh, your views on the impact of, say, first home owners grants. Mm. Uh, you thought that that only just simply pushed up the price of a house. Uh, it didn't create any stimulus in that sector. 
Uh, are you still of that view? Because first homeowners and housing construction and new homes is probably flatter than it's been in South Australia for 20 years. And that's despite the fact that we've got the stimulus, uh, sorry, we've got the bonus grant. Uh, we will still have the bonus grant for another 12 months. It will then go down to a drop step down to $4,000 for 12 months after that. So despite the fact that we have this grant, we still have a very flat um, housing market, which I think goes to the point that I don't think there's much evidence to show that um, these sorts of bonus grants do much to stimulate the housing sector. I think what does stimulate the housing sector is opening up new areas for development. And that's what the government's done with uh, Buckland Park and with the uh, uh, new housing development that's opened up in, in Mount Barker. They're the sorts of things which drive housing affordability and drive, uh, drive activity uh, in, in terms of new, new home starts rather than um, rather than a bit of cash uh, uh, thrown at a new home. What is uh, your department briefing you at the moment about the impact uh, on revenue, taxes, property taxes, uh, GST revenues from the from the economic slowdown? Uh, there's no doubt they're very soft. Uh, our uh, conveyancing revenues are very soft. Have been very soft uh, uh, recently. Um, our GST revenues are, are very uh, very uh, uh, soft as well. That's part of a national phenomenon. Um, uh, the GST take, the, the federal budget revised down the GST take across the nation by about a billion dollars every year over the budget period and so as a result that's reduced uh, the, um, how much uh, G we get in GST transfers from the Commonwealth.